I'm opening myself up and being vulnerable because this matters and people are hurting and Jesus came for hurting people. What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, we're going to be reviewing this book, Gay and God. Stick around. So today, we're going to go through just the introduction of this book. We're going to take this book one chapter at a time. And look, it, it might seem silly because it's really small. But if you watched the video I published last night where all I did was read the thing, that's an hour and 20 minute long video. Look, good theology, or to speak good, proper, biblical theology, you have to speak like an ant of Middle Earth. You have to take a long time to say it. So a small, tiny little pamphlet like this, this is phenomenal. This is probably the best book on the topic of homosexuality in the church that I have ever read. So in the introduction, we're going to take away three things. One, this is a deeply personal conversation. Two, we need to use this as a tool to change how we have the conversation. And three, and probably most importantly, you all need to understand that we are in the church. The pastor, Pastor Novotny says it this way uh, in the introduction, uh, LGBT people aren't out there. They're here. They're us. They're the ones we love. Hi, my name's Ryan. And if I didn't have an identity in Christ given to me by my baptism, the world would want me to say I'm bisexual. My identity is not in my sexuality. My identity is not in any of the things that I do on an individual basis. I'm a collection of all of these things, but my ultimate identity is a redeemed child of God because he says so. He said so on August 14th, 1983, when he made his decision for me and he sanctified me by the washing of water with the word. But we are in the church. So let's, let's back engineer this. We are in the church. Someone sitting next to you in the pew may be LGBT. And you might want to ask yourself. Now, I'm not, I'm not judging, and of course, there's always exceptions. Um, so please don't interpret this as me being judgmental, but I would request that if you don't know any, any LGBT people inside the church, the answer to the reason why you don't know starts with a look in the mirror. Maybe you are a kind and compassionate person, and maybe they just haven't said anything. That's a distinct possibility. But my experience inside the church, we don't say it because we don't trust you. We don't trust you to love us for who we are. We don't trust you to not clobber us with law. We don't trust you to not send us to a gay camp where we will be converted. We don't trust you to not feed us the bullshit line that we can pray the gay away as if we haven't spent most of our life trying that anyways. We are in the church and we're in the church looking for the same thing you're looking for. We're in the church to confess to God that we fall short and we are there to receive his mercy and his forgiveness, and strength to go forward and fight another day. We are there with the same hope you are, that we're never going to get the upper hand on our sin, but the victory, the battle is already won on Calvary, and there is going to be a day where he comes, and in the twinkling of an eye, he restores our bodies, and this is gone. That's what we're looking for. That's why we're in the church. We're not there trying to change the church or change doctrine or, or make justify ourselves or twist the scriptures so that we can go on and sin guilt-free. We're in the church. And it's time the church understood that and learned how to have the conversation. Here, it, it, from the introduction, here's how the conversation typically goes. Regarding whether or not gay people should even want to come to church, whether or not they should be in church, here's the conversation. Well, everybody can come, but you have to judge the sin, right? But how can it be sin if God made them that way? 
God didn't make them that way. They chose it. No, they didn't. And didn't Jesus say, don't judge? But Jesus also said, repent. But John 3 says God loves the world. But Leviticus 18 says it's an abomination. But Leviticus also says you can't eat shrimp. You're ignoring the passages. You're ignoring the people. That's the conversation typically. I'm 39 years old. I've been dealing with this my entire life. I've had this conversation thousands of times. This is the conversation. And as we walk through this book, we're going to learn how to change the conversation. Inside, this is inside baseball. We're, we're not really going to address the LGBTQ community outside of the church in the world. This is for the LGBTQ community inside the church, the ones that want to be there, that love God, trust his word, and really wrestle. This is who this is for. Lastly, from the introduction, this is deeply personal. If you watched that video, even the first 20 seconds of it, that where I was reading this book, you saw the disclaimer. The, the, the introduction starts off with an email about a lesbian who's married and they want to start a family and they want the family in church and they want to know if they're welcome. That's a deeply personal thing. And it took incredible bravery on the part of this woman to email such a request to the pastor. This is deeply personal to me because a Christian close to me couldn't discern the difference between a battle and a war and didn't understand that I fight these battles every day and sometimes I win and sometimes I lose, but I'm still in the war. Why? Because the battle, the, the war has already been won. I'm just waiting for the declaration. I'm waiting for, for the commander to come and, and declare the war over. But in the meantime, I still fight. She, she couldn't discern that losing a battle doesn't mean I've given up on the war. And so she decided everybody needed to know what a horrible, awful, evil hypocrite I am. And the only defense I had in that point was a good offense. So I said it first. And then I called my pastor. And we sit down on a regular basis. And we, he gave me this book. We talk about the hurt and the heartache that has come from what happened. And as far as dealing with this particular issue, we do it the way Christians have done it for 2,000 years. Private confession and absolution. We joke that I'm patient zero in my church, that as a pastor and as elders in my local congregation, we've never had to deal with this before. Lutherans, we got everything else. Our confessions are rock solid. So let's get this. Let's not be like the evangelicals and screw this up and hurt people and scare people and be public and to be number one to LGBTQ people. So that's the introduction to this book, why it matters, why it's important, what the goals are. The next time I'm on YouTube to talk about this, we'll be talking about the first chapter, Different Doesn't Deter Love, an exposition on the parable of the Good Samaritan, and we're going to learn how to love God's people without compromising God's word. That's coming up next. So I hope you stick around. I hope you share these with people that you think need to hear it, be they LGBT or not. I'm opening myself up and being vulnerable because this matters, and people are hurting and Jesus came to hurting people. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and the mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.